Right. Hi. This is a stick. It seems that the camera is a little bit slanted. Let me fix that. Nope. Somewhat. That didn't change much. No matter. Okay. First of all, I would like to say, you guys who follow me on this channel, you are the best followers on the whole YouTube. Yeah, I just had to get that one out. It's a... Uh, I mean, yeah, it's just awesome. You're fantastic. And thank you so much for the donations and it's just fantastic so I really appreciate it and this video is not the one that I promised the last time this is a different video right stick monopod small tripod foot why do I have that this weekend I was uh, DOP on a short film uh, it's actually a series of short films, uh, five in all. Low budget stuff, but a full crew. I've been used to do, used to be doing films on my own. So suddenly having a crew actually introduces a lot of other problems because there's a lot of people who have to be coordinated. It's often very effective to be just one person. And when you're more people, it requires a lot of coordination and it requires a whole set of different stuff you need. I have a incredible sound person called Mia Terry who's just amazing. I'll make a video with her uh, talking about how she mics up stuff and how she uses her gear and uh, you know she this is her position most of the time with a uh, with a boom uh, she's really fantastic so I'll make a video with her. When you work with a crew there's a lot of people there you have a director who wants to look what's happening and watching your monitor. I don't have a setup where I can have a wi-fi monitor so I just literally have people standing right, right next to me. It's a low budget thing so there's not really money to do the other thing it would be really nice to have like a separate monitor for the director and for the script and all that. So it's literally people packing up behind me. Because communication is a huge thing uh, when you have a whole crew for the post-production and everything else you have to think a little bit differently than you do when you're just jumping around with your camera by yourself. The first two movies I had it set up like I usually do more or less. Then I couldn't sleep this night so I thought well instead of just lying there I just got up and started rebuilding my whole rig. And it's an X-T4, footage from X-T4 rig that I also used for the film. I mean the footage that comes out of it, I mean you, you, you can't tell it's like a cheap camera. It looks amazing but there's a lot of things work-wise that kind of tells that it's not like a focused video camera but still you can do a lot of stuff to make it work like one so it will work in a crew setting so let me show you and I'll walk you through the whole thing you've probably seen something that resembles this before there's a lot of stuff that I sort of changed because of the whole crew thing and because of the circumstances that we're filming in let me just go through this thing from the front to the back in the front here this is called a matte box, this in front, and it really makes a huge difference to the contrast. It makes the image look less soft, but not in a harsh way, because it uh, hinders that the sunlight uh, hazes up the image. Even the slightest sunlight that sort of passes by your lens will haze stuff up. But with this French flag on top, you can diminish the worst direct light, and then this whole box in itself sort of just keeps the false light from entering. And on this Polar Pro matte box, there's also a built-in ND, which is ND that is made like a Polaroid filter, so you can turn it up and down by just turning it up here. It only has one problem, which is sometimes if you are filming a screen, there can be some weird shadows on that screen because of the way that a Polaroid filter works, you know, an adjustable. It introduces one single problem but it solves a huge amount of other problems so you can always just adjust your exposure to be perfect. But if you want to know more about this Polar Pro matter box just go to the Polar Pro website. I had it mounted directly to the lens this weekend and because the threads on this old Samyang lens that I really enjoy and love because it it's just just looks great. 24mm T-Star 1.5. It's really a great lens. I really enjoy uh, to use it. I 
hand focused the whole weekend but the threads are a little worn out so this one actually fell off a couple of times so i had to set it up on rails instead it makes the whole thing quite a bit heavier but then it's way more stable and i just have to train my shoulders to be stronger because it's a little bit heavy now the reason why it, the whole thing stands on a monopod which could seem a little insecure is because it doesn't take up a lot of space. We shot this second film in a very small apartment and at some point I was in a bathroom that is like tiny. So the only way I could be in there with the camera is literally having a, a monopod like this and just hiding in a corner. So I chose to use this monopod and actually I think I will continue using it because it gives you much more freedom. You can sort of tilt it forth and back you can move it pretty freely and if you want to take it off it's pretty easy you can just like lift it off because i made it so that like it is built in you can just take it off and the cool thing is if you want to set it down safely after you've been using it you know leave the stick just set it up here so you have this one and then it sits nicely on the ground when you're not using it and if you need low shots that's also really great and the other thing I chose to keep from my old setup was this tilty thingy that I have, an edel crone. So you can hoist it up a little bit and put it down and you can tilt up and down and you can also turn it. And that gives some freedom when you have to lock yourself into a corner and need a certain angle. So that's made for tilting, basically. Sometimes it's really hard to focus when you're locked up in a corner. I, I hand focus the whole thing. I feel pretty comfortable doing that. But at some point you want to sort of get away from the camera and you want to really be able to focus from afar. So this Tilt and Nucleus Nano, I think it's called, gives you the possibility to step away from it and just look at a monitor and just be super focused on focusing by using this. It requires battery. I have chosen to have both a battery in it and also keeping it juiced up by a battery plate on the other side. Let me show you how that looks. Right here is the little motor. I chose to put it underneath instead on the side. Usually you put the motors on the side. When you put it underneath, it doesn't like lift your lens up and down. And if you need to get rid of the mat box because you have no space, because the flag takes up a little space sometimes you have to do that also to lighten it for weight then you still have it sitting there then when the lens is just mounted to the mount on the camera it won't lift the lens up and down when you focus because it goes the other way it would sort of do this but for some reason it doesn't it doesn't disturb as much as when the lens starts to tilt it's only a tiny bit but when you work with this, you sort of notice all the details. Um, and I try to avoid having those little things that annoy you. So far, matte box, really important for good image quality. It's really convenient with the ND. And then focus pulling with the motor down here. I mounted this in a quite a peculiar way because I needed some distance to the motor because for some odd reason, when you get super close with this, to the motor itself it starts to lose connection which was really odd and also i had to fight a little bit with the plugs here in the side these all these plugs that are goes in on the side here takes up space because it's still a it's still not a professional video camera it's it's a hybrid so i had to sort of make some distance so it's not like sitting on top of the plugs with some stuff i had lying around i screwed it into this mount for the nucleus nano and then it sits there and it's pretty tight i can actually lift it but lifting and focusing at the same time here can be pretty problematic hold it and focus but again it's pretty heavy i have to lift some iron because this Heavy. Oopsie. But most of the time I, I want it to sit here on this monopod and just use it like this. I can do so much from here. And then you have a super stable shot. The X-T4 has a magnetic stabilizer in it. And again you have to work with it to make it work the best. And sometimes it can sort of do some weird stuff. You know, if you move too fast it has some sort of weird delay. It doesn't have a brain, it doesn't know what to do just guessing so if you do certain moves it will look weird 
So you really have to adjust yourself to how the camera works and how the stabilizer works and use the different settings. You can set it up so it's easier to make walking. You can set it up so it works better on a tripod and there's different uh, modes here that you can set it up. But no matter that, this is more about the sort of the exterior. What I also did was I received the sound from the sound girl and I actually just used this little road. You have this receiver and then you have two transmitters. And so she just transmitted it over here. But I think in the future, because post-production, when you don't do it yourself, you really need to communicate what you're doing. And syncing is a, an issue because the sound girl is recording like six tracks of uh, different uh, sources. And what I get is just a mix of that. But you really need time code when you are working in a crew. There's a company called Tentacle that makes a little setup that works for cameras like this. I haven't got it. Still low budget and uh, being broke is a thing. But the Tentacle stuff is pretty smart because it's like three little brains where one goes to the sound guy, the other one goes on camera, and then you have this like the time code master, you could say. It dedicates one audio channel to the time code which is just like white noise, it just have this white noise thing. And then you have a mono left for your lead audio, which is basically just used for syncing. And you also do the clap, you know, with a clapboard, just to keep track of everything. That's pretty important. So still this is a compromise that I get some lead sound and then afterwards I have to do some syncing of sound. And then in the end, it's the sound designer who uh, has the job of figuring out what, what the channels of sound sounds the best. But Mia will tell you much more about it in the video I make with her, about the weird way you actually get sound from making movies. Because it's like a whole bunch of mics that just catches what, whatever's there, and then you use the best and you just put it together. And it's quite a science, I would say. It's a big job. So I'm pretty happy that we have a really good uh, sound design on this. Yes, and you might have noticed that, oh my god, I'm all, I'm fighting with that microphone. You have to be there, else nobody can hear what I'm saying. Okay, I can see that my monitor's out of the frame. That's odd. A little bit annoying, I'll just go back a little. Right, okay, you might see that I have now put the monitor on this swivel arm. Usually I have used these little things and just set it on top of the handle so I could just tilt it back, tilt it up. But very often I had to take it off and sometimes even hold it in my hand to be able to put it in a position where I could actually see what I was doing. Often I had to put the camera up against the wall or in a corner and then had to focus from there and like had to put my head on the side to be able to see what I was doing. So I decided to put the whole thing on, on this this arm so I can move it around in all kinds of different positions. And that really solves a lot of issues because it's just more convenient that you just adjust this arm. And I found that these uh, small rig, these short stubby ones, are really good for it because they actually they can actually hold it. Where a lot of other longer arms, they just give in. That's super annoying. It starts to fall apart. But this doesn't fall apart. And that's great. This Field World monitor is a super cheap monitor. It works fairly well. I had a small HD, but uh, that one broke. So that was actually pretty good. But uh, this is also okay. It's not not bad. I mean, it could be better, but not the worst. It has a little, f it's the interface a little fiddly. But it, it works for what it is, so that's cool. On the other side is this, like, you might have seen this before. It's my small rig wooden handle. That just gives me great control. I haven't put in the cable right now to start stop because I have a different start stop sitting up here. Because very often I start stop it up here, but I have to like make a new cable so I can connect the other start stop as well so they work in conjunction with each other. And that little thing, you might have seen it before. I actually made it. Uh, I was in Japan filming in 2019. 
and I had just drilled a hole in my handle and put put in a, a start stop button. I used it for like five minutes and then it broke, and that was super annoying. So I had to figure out a way to make something that was way more sturdy and doesn't break. So on the plane, I took my laptop and made a drawing of this, and called a guy in in Denmark uh, and asked if they could make a few of these. It works pretty well. You can place it wherever you want. I still only have three of them because it's just a prototype. But I can place them anywhere I want. And it sits up here. And you can actually mount it from either side. It's a bit stubby, but it, it you can't break it. It's just impossible. And you can just... It's really easy. So however you hold it, you just do the start-stop and it's super reliable. That works really nicely. On the other side, you see the handle and then a microphone that's also just for lead sound. So you can um, sync it afterwards, which is uh, really convenient. If I do some B-roll stuff, I can just go into this one. Then I have whatever sounds there and I can sync up later with the, with the sound that's recorded. So that is really nice. What else is there to tell? Uh, I mean, I had to do a little trickery with the way it is set up down here because I wanted to be able to just pull it off. I don't want to carry this Edelchrome thing around at all times. So I wanted to be able to detach the camera. So I can detach it here, like here, or I can detach it up here. And I can actually also detach the camera itself up here really quickly because they all have super fast clamps so you can take it off in like more steps than one so if I want to do some handheld and I need it to be light and want to do hand focusing I literally just unscrew this screw and that screw and then I can just lift it off and move about with it and then I wouldn't need this one I could just take it off and it's super easy to just detach you can see here it's literally just this. Just take it off. And uh, it's just super convenient and very easy. And you really need that because on a set, on a film set, no matter what set it is, it's super stressful at all times more or less because as the DOP or photographer, you're the one that have the least breaks. You're the one that always works. When other people sit in the corner and drink a cup of coffee and smoke a cigarette. I might be unloading carts and getting ready for the next scene. So you're literally working a lot as the photographer because on a low budget, you don't have like a whole bunch of assistants. So you have to think all these things through and, and make decisions on what makes your life easier. <laughs> because I just want stuff to work. I don't want to fight. I want it to be easy. And I want everything to be easily det detachable so that I can literally take it apart and also pack it up afterwards. Because if you have to go to a new location, that has to go fast. And if you have to go with the car, you really don't want it to sit like this unless you're just sitting in a seat and holding it. Because if, if it just tilts to the side and hits one of, the, one of these um, plugs, it breaks. I mean, everything that can break will break. Maybe I should just take it apart just to show how easily you can take this apart. It's actually a bit annoying because I just assembled it, but no matter. Okay, let's say I don't need the sound from directly from the sound guy. In the future, if I get the money, I'll get the tentacles because then I have time code and sound at the same time, but for now, this works pretty well. So I'll just take this off. And in that circumstance, I would of course plug this one in. But let's say I don't want this um, mic. It just goes off like this, super easy. It's also um, a small rig thingy that is dampened. You know, when I touch the camera, it doesn't go into the mic. So that's pretty nice and it's really sturdy. This one doesn't break. It's really nicely made. It's a, a small rig makes some good stuff. So this goes off. So I'll just put these aside. And let's say I don't need the handle now. So I'll just like take that one off. And the handle goes off with the little button I put into it. 
I'm still really happy I did this. Man, it's it's so nice just to be able to just start and stop. Instead of having to sort of dive in to push the start button here, you can just, it's easy. So that's it. And then I could say, if I want to detach the whole camera, I don't need this focus pulling. I would probably just focus pull with my hands when I want to take the whole thing off. That one goes off pretty easily, not the attachment. I just chose to do it this way. So this thing would still sit there. This one, that's the whole attachment thing. I can live with that, but I could choose to put it up in a different way, but this one was the most compact way to set it up. I will just keep this on uh, when I use it handheld. What should I detach next? Now we are so, sort of going into having a super compact setup. So let me show how that would work. Let me show how it would work with the matter box attached. Then I would detach it from all the way down here. I would just tilt it up so I can easily uh, loosen this button. Oh, that's one thing I forgot to mention is right here there's this little plate. And that little plate is for battery. This battery literally just goes in here. And of course it's a bit of weight so I chose to have a not the biggest battery on the planet. In here there's a focus mode, I, I have showed it before. This is for that and also for this. It supplies power to this one and the motor. There's a guy called Caleb who has a channel called DSLR Shooter and he has made some super nice rigs. And he has a great solution with the compact 12 volt battery that he puts on the back. I haven't gone into that yet. So I have these like batteries sitting on the monitor and a battery sitting here. And I have some outputs here to power some stuff. And this one also have a power out. So I can sort of power stuff in, in different ways. This is pretty nice for me that I have different batteries because when I want to detach stuff, I can get rid of some weight that's only for something I, I won't use at some point. Did that even make sense? I don't know. No matter. And now I want to detach this setup with the display as a handheld setup. What I do there is tilt this and loosen and take it off. Then I still have the motor here sitting under here. And so this setup would be with this focus pulling mechanism, which is pretty nice because it's wireless. If I don't want to focus pull with this one and the motor, I can take off even more. I have to take off uh, the attachment to the rails. So I just loosen it completely. And when I've done that, I will loosen this little clampy thingy. So I can, and then that exact thing happened that I had trouble with during the weekend, which is that the threads in this are totally worn out. That really sucks. So you just experienced what I experienced this weekend a few times, and that's why I have the rails on. But if you have a, a lens where the... I, I wanna keep, keep this footage in with all these mistakes because this happens when you're on set, suddenly the thing just falls apart. So, I don't hope this, oh no, it broke. No. It broke. Me. Oh. And that also happens. Man, this totally broke. Oh no. That's why you have to be so f bloody careful. I'll finish the video anyway. I have to, maybe I can glue it, I don't know. Well, fuck it. Okay, let's finish. Yeah, a broken mat box, but handheld and super light and easy and I can focus in here. So this is like a like a three step pyramid or three step rocket or whatever you could call it. And now I have this on and off button up here and it works really nicely. No matter how I position it, I can always adjust this thing so it sits nicely. The next thing I want to do is actually to make a shoulder mount and have an EVF whenever the budget allows it. 
But for now I have to glue and repair my Polar Pro mat box that I just broke. Damn it. Well, you get the gist of it. Uh, yeah, what a way to end the video. So, god damn it. It is what it is. But it's, the setup is super nice. And, uh, Right. Man. God damn it. <sighs> I broke my stuff. Shit. Right now, I'm acting as a human clamp. Holding this together that I just broke. Oh my god, why did I do that? Epoxy. And uh, I can't let go of it for at least five minutes. And I hope it will hold up afterwards. Um, yeah. My hands will be stuck in this position for a while now. I think it will work after this. It's um, modern glue is pretty, pretty good. So, yeah. I broke it. Well, see you next time.